the okay so um with charles law then it's the same game as any other uh, uh equation um if i give you three things you'll be able to solve for the fourth one so in here i might give you this whoops i might give you this this and this and have you solve for the final temperature or i give you any three of those and you have to be able to solve now the pressure the boyle's law wasn't too bad to solve for anything like if i wanted to solve for this i just would have to divide both sides by v2 it was pretty easy to easy to do that if in this question here if i'm solving for t2 it's a little trickier mathematically to figure out how to do t2 i'm going to show you one mathematically how to do it but then i'm going to show you just a little trick and it works for all the other formulas that well it works for all the formulas we have in this section uh okay um let's try and solve for one of these variables notice i put a bunch of uh, uh formulas on the screen so we'll do this a couple of times um i can get rid of this balloon go away balloon okay so uh on this first one mac tell me uh what variable you want us to solve for what oh great start with the worst one okay so what I do when I'm solving for T2 is uh, I always circle it just so I know that that's what I'm going for. The issue that I want it at the end I want it to say T2 is equal to other stuff, right? And T2 wants to be on the top. So mathematically this is how you and I don't know if I would even write this down, but just, I just want to prove to you that the way that I'm going to show you how to do it works every time. It's not really mathematical rules. It's just a bit of, it's not even trickery. It's just uh, shortcuts, I guess, is, is what it is. If I wanted to solve for T2, then uh, what you can use is um, uh, multiply both sides by the same thing. So I'm going to multiply this side by T2, and I'll multiply this side by T2, because I want a T2 to be on the top. Okay? So that would mean my formula would look like that. But I don't have T2 is equal to... I've got T2 V1 over T1. So now what I could do is I could maybe, uh, why don't I divide both sides by V1? And that would leave me with T2 over T1 is equal to V2 over V1. Is that hurting yet? I'm just following rules. And then the last one, I want to get rid of the T1. So I'm going to multiply this side by T1 multiply this side by T1. So these cancel. I'm left with T2 is equal to V2 T1 over V1. But that hurt, for me, that hurts a little bit. And I can do that, and, and I can manipulate formulas any, any way you want. But it's a whole lot easier to do it this way. And it's a ratio proportion kind of thing, or cross multiply and divide, if you've heard of cross multiply and divide. So if I'm solving for T2, rather than do all this stuff, which you can do, and if you like doing that, have at it, this is an easier way. If that's what I'm sol solving for, I write T2 is equal to, and then it's the cross multiply and divide thing. So here's a cross here, and here's a cross here. So I use the cross that doesn't have what I'm looking for. I'm looking for T2, so I use the other cross. And I multiply those together. So it'll be T1 times V2. And then I divide it by whatever's left. So the V1 is, is left, so I'm going to divide it by V1. So notice that that's the same thing as I got when I did all my mathematical trickery. And if, if you... And I guess... Um, when we're doing any of these gas law formulas, it's all about manipulating the formulas and plugging things in correctly. And if you're very methodical in how you go about each question, pretty hard to go wrong. So let's try and solve it for another one. Caden, pick another letter. V1, T1, V2, or T2? Which one? V2? Perfect. So let's solve this equation for V2. 
and let's do it the same way as we did before. So V2, whoops, I'm going to write V, V2, ah, V2 is equal to, and you see the cross? So here's the cross there. You don't want to use the thing that's across from what you're looking for. It's the other cross. So it'll be V1 times T2 divided by T1. Notice when you do this too, and, uh, and this is just uh, something that came across my mind, is sometimes people mix this up and they put the T1 on the top and the V1, T2 on the bottom. Just know that when you're doing any one of these formulas, you always wind up with more stuff on the top than you do on the bottom. Like here I've got two things on the top and just one on the bottom. And so um, if you get something that where you just have one on the top and two on the bottom, you know you've done manipulated something wrong. Let's try a couple questions. Uh, maybe I have to stop my video, stop my recording before I go on. So uh, in this example, they've got a bunch of words there with a bunch of stuff in it. And then they say at the end, um, calculate the volume of the hydrogen sample at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so when I'm looking at, at the question, it says a sample of hydrogen gas is collected at zero Celsius and then it's heated to 68. So it must have started a, a temperature of zero. So this has got to be in my initial temperature. I'm hesitant to write it here because I know all my temperatures have to be in Kelvin. And so I'm just going to go off to the side and go 0, 0.00 plus my 273.15. Well, I guess I can do that in my head. So my initial temperature is 273.15 Kelvin. And then temperature 2 is 68. So again, I have to go 273.15 plus 68. Okay, it'll be 0 0.15, 11, 14, 341.15. So temperature 2 is 341.15 Kelvin. Okay. Um, then they say the volume at 68 degrees, so that's this one, that's the 2 side, um, the volume is 26 liters. So this is 26.0 liters. And they say calculate the volume at the start. So what would the, the volume at the start of it be? Then they also say, nice in this question, I don't always do it, but they, some do, assume constant pressure and no gas escaping. So the pressure and the number of moles are a wash, so I don't have to worry about them. So when I look at the formula, I need V's and T's. Sure enough, there's Charles Law right there. That's the formula I'm going to look for. And what am I going to be searching for? I'm looking for V1. That's the one I want. So when I manipulate my formula, V1 is equal to, see if you can write it down. See, write down on your papers what V1 is going to be equal to. Hopefully you got T1 V2 over T2. Okay, does it matter on the top if you have T1 uh, first or V2 first? No, commutative law in math, multiplying the order of the things that you multiply doesn't matter. Okay, so now I plug stuff in. Um, and this is, if you set up something like this on the side, this makes it so it's way easier, more straightforward, plugging things in. So T1 is 273.15 Kelvin times V2, 26 liters, divided by T2, uh, 341.15 Kelvin. So my Kelvins cancel. I'm left with liters as uh, my unit. So the, that's perfect. So now just go into, onto your calculator or decimals or whatever and figure out what it would be. When you look at it, the temperature is... 
smaller, 273 is smaller than 341. So I'd assume the volume has to be smaller too. I don't know how much smaller but what you come up with? 20.817 liters. And then I look at my sig figs, I've got, looks like I have three everywhere. So volume is going to be 20.8 liters. Fairly straightforward. Let's try one more. I'll give you a head start and uh, you can try uh, this. Um, so I'm looking at V's and N's, so my formula will be this one. I'm searching for N2. Formula will be N2 is equal to N1V2 divided by V1. Again, hopefully you're getting on to manipulating the formulas. Plug numbers in, 2.50 times V2 is 1 liter divided by v1 1.75 liters that was moles so 2.5 times 1 divided by 1.75 no idea five the no no i have no idea i should know 25 go go into that 25 times and into that seven times. No, 10, seven. 10 divided by seven. One point. What's it come out here? Um, Good. 1.428 moles. And then um, sig figs. You could sig fig that. Looks like three sig figs everywhere, so 1.43 moles. Sort of as a follow-up question, I didn't ask it, but I should have. I should have said, well, what mass of helium would be left in the, in the balloon? So you could, you could do that using this formula. Moles is mass over molar mass. If you're looking for mass, it's moles times molar mass. Notice that the same way of, of solving this equation would work. If you just pre pretend that there's a one under the end there, if I'm looking for mass, it's moles times molar mass divided by one. So moles are 1.428, I would use that same number as I had, times the molar mass of helium, which is 4.00 grams per mole. So if you just took your answer from before, multiplied by four, 57, 5.7. What's it come out to? 5.71 grams. So I'd have 5.71 grams of helium left in. I started with 10, leaked, some leaked out, ended with 5.71. So that's Charles' law and Avogadro's law. The worksheet that I gave you uh, for today is I think just, uh, well, the first part is converting Kelvin to Celsius. And then the last part is just working all with uh, Charles' law and Avogadro's law. Uh, in the worksheet, turn to, to the very last page, my favorite page. It's a choose your own adventure page. Or in other words, you have to make up your own question. But I think I give you some guidelines, right? The first question has to be a bicycle tire. So you could give me a, a, a tire has a certain volume and certain amount of gas in it. Oh no, Charles, a certain volume and certain temperature. And then maybe you change the temperature and want to know what the new volume is. That'd be a good one. And then the next one, uh, Avogadro is blowing up a balloon. So you've got a certain amount of gas in there, certain volume. If you add a bunch more gas, what will the, the volume be? Something like that. Okay. All right. Go ahead. The rest of the day is yours to work on those nine questions.
feel free to ask me any questions. Focus on sig figs. Focus on being consistent and how you write down the information from the question. Select the formula. Manipulate the formula. Plug numbers in. Come up with an answer. Give me sig figs. Make sure you're consistent in all those steps. Okay, go ahead. I'll come around and give you a hand as you need it. 